This is a video about bereaved children's awareness by the Irish Childhood Bereavement Network. Our website is www.childhoodbereavement.ie. Children express grief differently, and sometimes as adults, we need to help them find their way. It's instinctive in us to want to protect children, but we cannot reverse or fix what has happened. But we can do our best to help children through the reality of this very difficult time in an honest and open way. Grief is confusing, hard, lonely and overwhelming at times. Children express grief differently. Sometimes we call it puddle jumping or puddle grief. They tend not to be sad all the time, but actually they'll tend to dip in and out of their grief. They get diverted by playing with their friends or doing routine things like school. They will feel the loss over time and in different ways as they grow and learn to understand the real meaning of death. There are four key steps in supporting a child's grief. Number one, talk to them. Tell them the truth. Have open, honest conversations using language that is clear and that they can understand for their age. So for very young children, you break it down into simple steps. And as they get older, you expand and give them more information. Acknowledge their feelings and encourage them to ask questions to help them understand and cope with the emotions that they're feeling. Explain things in a way that they understand, no matter how young they are. Reassure them and be prepared to repeat the information until they really can get their head around it. Children's understanding of death changes depending on their age and their developmental stage. So for very young children, and babies, they don't understand the concept of death, but they will feel the absence of the familiar person. They can sense that something has changed, but they operate very much in the present especially once the routine is maintained. They may show some clinginess and distress and maybe some withdrawal or outbursts and crying and angry tears. Children from the age of preschool years, two to four, again, they don't understand the finality of death, but they may still search for the person because they don't understand that that person is gone forever. And they might start showing signs of regression or irritability. And sometimes these can be really intense. So they might one minute be playing happily and the next minute have an outburst. In time, they'll establish another relationship. And as adults, we need to respond with a lot of care and comfort and reassurance. As the child gets older and they move into the primary school years, they're learning language, gaining autonomy to explore the world. They can ask very concrete and challenging questions at this stage. And they want simple and clear answers that aren't going to confuse them. They may blame themselves in some way for the, for the death because in their world at that age, they live in the magical thinking phase. So that's why it's important to be really concrete in the information you give. They may regress, have nightmares or, or play violent games to try and express some of their feelings. 
because they often don't have the words to express their emotions. But you can learn a lot about how they feel and think from observing their play and getting them to draw and to express themselves through creative forms can be really helpful at this age. Then as the child matures into the later part of primary school between the and before they make the progression to secondary school, they're usually starting to understand the meaning of death. Um, they understand that it's universal. It happens to all living things and that when somebody dies, they cannot come back. Whereas prior to this age, they often wish and hope and believe that the person can, can still come back. Again, they're in a more concrete place in their thinking. So the more concrete and clear and concise information you give them, that will cause less confusion. Their reality has been shaken by understanding that somebody close to them can die. And they often worry that somebody else close to them will die as well. So therefore, that need for reassurance and support is really important here. Often their sleeping or eating patterns will be disturbed. They might want to withdraw from normal activities at this age. Um, but again, all of these things can be addressed with lots of support, reassurance and acknowledgement that their feelings are valid and normal for what they've experienced. When the young person moves into adolescence, their grief reaction will depend very much on their personality, the, the age they're at within the adolescent cycle and the developmental level. Sometimes they don't show visible reactions at all and they'll mask it sometimes at this age with things like rebellion, moody, negative antisocial behavior. They might want to try and numb out the pain, you know, with things like drink or drugs or try and find meaning because they feel so powerless. It's a very uncertain time at this age and they're really trying to struggle with what's the what the future holds. So looking for support from their peers is usually very important at this age. Often teenagers don't want to talk about their feelings, but letting them know that you're there for them and that they can talk to you at any stage and giving them that sort of one good adult to turn to is very important. So children grieve in a very personal, individual and unique way. They express their grief differently, dipping in and out of their feelings and emotions. They understand loss in different ways as they grow. When they're very young, the concept is too hard to get their head around. As they get older, they understand it more. They learn to express their emotions from watching their family and from within their family. And play is a great outlet for their grief. It gives them a break from the sadness to, that they don't want to carry all the time. So the things that help are human compassion, warmth and connection. Helping them and preparing them for things that they might see and experience around the time of a death and after the death. When they see adults modeling good, healthy coping, that helps them because they'll learn from watching how the adults cope. When they're given space to experience and express their own grief in their own way, that's very important. And the words to help clarify, empower and encourage them to open up and talk to somebody about their emotions and to help them understand what's normal at this time when they're grieving. And connecting with their peers around the experience can be very important. And traditionally in Ireland, around the time of funerals, children meet up with the cousins, the older cousins look out for the younger cousins. All of that is very supportive for children around the time of the death. So things to do. 
Acknowledge that the loss is important and that it matters. Listen to their thoughts, feelings and opinions. Let them know it's fine to ask questions. Give them age appropriate information. As much as possible, try and maintain day to day routines. If things have changed, include the child in the decision and explain the changes and reassure them. Make sure they need to know it's OK not to be sad all the time. That they can go out and have fun with their friends and that's OK. Give them time to show their feelings, even their anger, which can be a really deep expression of how unfair the whole situation is. Let them talk about their relationship with the person who died and help them continue the bonds with their loved one. As the child matures, they'll need new explanations, which can involve revisiting the grief. When, it, when they've been explained everything when the death happened, maybe when they're three or four, when they're eight or nine, you might have to have a whole new conversation with them because they'll be ready to hear it differently and understand it differently at that age. They need to know that they are not to blame and that anything they did or thought did not cause the death. It's normal for very young children to think that they were to blame for what has happened. They don't understand and they still live in that magical thinking world. Reassure them that they are loved and that they will be cared for no matter how difficult the grief is for the family. With good support, most children will not need professional help. If you'd like more information, contact us through our website on www.childhoodbereavement.ie. Thank you for listening. And if there's anything we can do, feel free to contact us.